Okay, so Umbrella Academy Season 3 ends with a big cliffhanger that seems like it's ripped right out of the ending of Fight Club. Even the final shots are set up in the same way, and if you're here, it probably means you have no idea what's going on. Well, you're in luck, you chump, as throughout this video, we're going to be going over the biggest WTF questions to give you some clarity on what exactly is happening in the show. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Yes, that is too good not to use again, and if you like the video, then please hit the thumbs up button, and also don't forget to subscribe for breakdowns like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into the Umbrella Academy Season 3. Okay, so the first big question I think we need to talk about is who is Sir Reginald Hargreaves? Well, in the series, we have had hints towards his backstory, and Season 1's final episode opened with him at his wife Abigail's side as she lay in her deathbed. Season 2 showed us that he's in fact an alien, and this opening scene in 10 was actually his home planet. He said farewell to Abigail and took with him not only a jar of orbs that he opened up, but also a white violin that he later gifted to Victor. Now in the comics, we get some of what happens after this fleshed out when we read more about the character. We discover that his home planet was dying along with his wife, and that he set out amongst the cosmos in his private vessel, the Minerva. This was with his private bodyguard, Abijad, who doesn't feature in the show, and instead, a lot of his role is shifted over to Pogo. On Earth, Hargreaves invested in several businesses, he became a Nobel Prize winner, and also an Olympic gold medalist. In Season 2, when the family travel back in time, we discover that he teamed up with the Majestic 12, a group of Illuminati-esque people who had some basis in the real world. The Illuminati? For decades now, there's been conspiracy theories surrounding the mysterious members that make it up, and they're meant to be a number of high-ranking scientists, military leaders, and government officials. According to the rumours, they control world events and also hide the existence of UFOs. The group was apparently formed all the way back in 1947 under the orders of President Truman, and after recovering an alien spacecraft, they began to cover up the truth from humanity. They and Hargreaves worked together for a long time, and he helped them in several technological advances, which is when he became so involved in the space race. We discover in Season 2 that he's attempting to reach the dark side of the moon, which we learn the reason for in Season 3. Turns out that Abigail is there, and I believe that his ship crash landed on Earth after dropping her there, which is why he was desperate to get back. She may have been shot out in an escape pod-esque station, which we see Luther was put in charge of guarding. Now Hargreaves ended up severing ties with the group after he discovered that they were complicit in the assassination of JFK. After that, he went into somewhat obscurity, formed the Academy, and enacted the next part of his plan. Now I believe that the hotel itself might actually be his downed ship. When the environment transforms around it, it seems like some kind of vessel with a cockpit inside of it. I think that Hargreaves' plan was to reset the universe, and he wished to unleash the orbs, let them get absorbed into women in order to create life, take these children, nurture them until they matured, and then use them as a way to power up the machine. This would then allow for the universe to restart, so that he could be with Abigail. This explains why he got involved with the space race, tried to get to the dark side of the moon, and also trained the academy. However, it might also be possible that you can just sacrifice lives in order to start it up, but adding the orbs into it explains why the seven members at the end don't need to die in order for it to be charged. I think that the vessel carried its own defense mechanisms in the Guardians, and that this stopped him from accessing the ship, which is why he sent in the soldiers. He put forth a number of them, but all of them were wiped out, and thus he decided to train the Umbrella and Sparrow Academy so that they'd be strong enough to take them on. In the training session, we see they're literally fighting over a bell on the floor, which foreshadows the seven bells that he talks about them having to ring. We also learn that there were 43 women who ended up giving birth to the children with special abilities, and that he tried to adopt all of them. However, he only managed to get seven, making me think that he wanted backups, just in case the others either left or died. Now, he originally tried this with the Umbrella Academy, but due to Ben passing away and number five disappearing, they slowly start to fracture, and eventually the group split. Thus, he ended up taking his own life in order to bring them back together for his funeral. My guess is that he had put the pieces in place so that they'd discover the hotel, and then they themselves would end up powering the machine up, with the universe being reset through that. This would then bring him back to life, and then he could carry out his own plan. However, things went awry, and after the apocalypse happened, they had to travel back in time. This eventually led to them meeting Hargreaves, and after he realised that they weren't the kind of students he could train, he started to track down others. This was basically his endgame, and Hargreaves is really the villain of the show, with his ultimate goal being to reset the universe so that he can be with his wife. Judging by the final scene, it seems like they rule over the entire world, and that the pair have their fingers in every form of industry. 
With her at his side, he's likely changed the face of the planet and will probably be the big bad come the next season. Now, his plan to restart the universe would have happened either way, with or without the apocalypse. We discover that Project Oblivion is something that he wanted to carry out for a long time and that it's the reason Pogo ended up leaving his employment. This was a suicide mission and discovering this is also why the Sparrows decided to medicate him so that he couldn't manipulate them into doing it. Klaus stopping him from taking his pills allowed the character to get back into his proper frame of mind and he ended up manipulating him for most of the season. He apparently became a good father and this made Claus try and win in favour with the family once more. Hargreaves then planted the idea on their heads about resetting the universe and he killed Luther to unite the group. This was his plan all along and it didn't really matter if there was a Kugel Blitz or not. Now that kind of leads us into my next question which is why was the Kugel Blitz created? Well, this ties into Holland killing the mothers of the Umbrella Academy. After he ended up getting his own special abilities, he said he felt them upon his mother's death. However, he couldn't control his powers and thus he killed all their mothers instead. This meant that they were never born and thus if they were never born, then they could never have created the new timeline by travelling back in time and then travelling back to the future to be part of it because it's a lot of ti timey wimey wibbly wobbly stuff. Now, though we don't know exactly how Pogo goes out, he was killed along with the reality as were all the other characters that don't make it through the portal. Normally the commission would have kept things in check but as we know they were wiped out too. Now we actually discover that 5 ended up creating the commission which again is a bit of a head f***. 5 states that he doesn't remember doing this and therefore it could be his future self rather than being a variant. I think that it has to be a version of him from later down the line as he tells him to not stop the apocalypse and he also says oblivion which is of course hinting towards the hotel. Just in case you don't know, that's the true name of the hotel and this was revealed in the aptly titled third volume, Hotel Oblivion. Now the other questions you probably have over the ending are how did Luther come back to life? Though he would have returned in the reset, he showed back up at the hotel along with Klaus. I believe that this is the next evolution in Klaus's powers and just in the same way that he can return to the land of the living, I believe those trapped on the other side can be brought back too. Early on the season was very much about him mastering his abilities and this is likely the next step. Now I'm reading your mind mate, I'm, do I'm doing a Professor X out here and not only do you want to subscribe but you also don't want to ever unsubscribe either. On top of that, you're wondering if Sloan exists in this reality. The answer is a mystery but I'm leaning towards yes due to everyone being returned and all their wounds being healed. However, she should have come back in the elevator as she was at the hotel so potentially this machine might have sacrificed her. There is the possibility that Sloane would not have existed in a new timeline if the Umbrellas had have been born, so she might have actually been wiped out in order to not cause another paradox. It's strange she's the only one not there, especially as we get a second version of Ben who shows up in the credit scene. This is another, I'm reading your mind mate. Wait, what did, what did you say about my mother? Anyway, this is another question that you likely have. Well, to get into it, there actually exist two versions of Ben in the franchise. The first version is the initial one who was with the umbrellas that died as a child. He became a ghost but his spirit was put to rest in the second season. However, when they went back in time and changed things, Ben was altered too. Neither Harlan or Hargreaves met him because he was a ghost and therefore his mother wasn't killed and he was seen as being someone who could be selected by Reginald. So this Sparrow version exists but so does the original one because he wasn't killed after the universe was reset. The only person who doesn't seem to be affected by anything is Allison, who still has a bandage on her arm showing that she hasn't healed. Because she is the one that pressed the button inside what I'm guessing is the cockpit, she likely was protected from the effects. Remember this was designed by Hargreaves so that he could be with his wife and he likely didn't want to lose the memories he had of her with the universe reset. It's possible that the one we see ruling over everything actually has no idea that his plan worked and rather than living peacefully with his wife, He's decided to do this because he didn't know the alternative. Putting himself at the top like this would make him and Abigail a target for people that want to overthrow him and if this was the plan all along to get her back, I don't think he'd go through with it if he had any memory of what had come before. Now another question over Allison is what's up with Ray? He returns at the end to be with her and it appears that the pair finally got their happy ending in the present. Now I've kind of gone back and forth on this and there are really three outcomes. The first is that he was transported to the present after Allison pressed reset like my mate used to when I was beating him on Smackdown. However, this would cause a paradox and if they want to go for the fourth apocalypse in a row, then him being in the future could be the cause of it. 
He would have only have been brought forward if they went back in time, but they couldn't have gone back in time without the... F uh, uh, never mind now. Getting too confusing. Now, the second option is that the person who presses the button gets their heart's desires in this new universe and that all the rules go out the window in order to make it work. This would mean he's her child's father now and that there are no paradoxes created. The third version, and one that I think might be the most likely, is that he's a hallucination. Throughout the series, Alison has had several of them, and I think that's the most likely case here. Anyway, that's all the major ones, but if you have any other questions below, then make sure you drop them in the comments. We are running a competition right now and giving away three copies of Everything Everywhere all at once on the 15th of July, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the show. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the series, which will be linked on screen right now. We talk a bit more in depth about it, and some of the questions that we don't cover here, so definitely go head over there right after this. But out of the way, thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.